Welcome back everyone to APCSA. This is going to be Unit 3. I'm here to teach way better than your teacher can. We're going to be going over tips and tricks. We're going to go over shortcuts. We're going to go over everything you need to know about Unit 3 here. This is going to be our unit about uh, the if statements, the else if statements, operators, booleans, etc. So let's get right into it, okay? So first we need to understand some of the syntax for the comparison operators, the boolean operators. So let me create two integers here. int num1 equals 5, int num2 equals 2. Let's call them, OK? There are many uh, ways that we can compare these two numbers, OK? So for example, I can compare if num1 is the same as num2, OK? So if I do that, then I get false. No, this expression right here evaluates to the Boolean false and says they are not equal to one another. Well, I can rewrite this with the not equal operator, where this operator uh, queries is num1 not equal to num2. And if I get that, then I get true. Yes, the two are not equal. We can also say is num1 greater than num2. That's not the greater than symbol. Where is it? There it is. Is num1 greater than num2? Yes, num1 is greater than num2. Is num1 less than num2? False, it's not. We can also ask if num1 is greater than or equal to that or equal to num2. And we can switch the sign around for the opposite comparison. Yes, num1 is greater than or equal to num2. So these are our conventional Boolean operators. Now, don't forget, if these are objects, like let's say uh, num1 is an integer class, integer num1 equals new integer num5. If these were objects, then I would need to use the dot equals operator in order to compare them. So remember to use dot equals whenever you're comparing objects. Okay, moving on from there, we have what is probably going to be the most used piece of knowledge in the entire course, if statements. Okay, an if statement is like this. If, and then you have some parentheses, and inside those parentheses you're going to put a condition. You're going to put a boolean operator. You're going to say if num1 is greater than or equal to num2, and then you're going to put your open curly braces. So let me write some example code right here, and we're going to walk through precisely how it works, okay? So what's going on here is I start with my if statement, I use the little word if, and then inside some parentheses, I put a Boolean condition, okay? And this is read if num1 is greater than or equal to num2. Okay, if that Boolean expression evaluates to true, uh, first let me correct this back to the way it was before, so that I'm not comparing an object to something else. If this is true, this statement, then continue into the curly braces and execute this code, okay? So in this case, num1 is indeed greater than or equal to num2, so the system should outprint yes, which it does, as demonstrated here, okay? Now, if I were to do a different comparison, like if the two are exactly equal to one another, the code never runs, okay? This curly braces section is never executed, so the system never prints out yes, okay? So something I want to uh, convey here very explicitly, coding is something you must practice. The best way to learn coding is through practice. Okay, this isn't some cheesy sponsor or anything. It's just find something where you can practice Java and practice it. I, it's much easier to learn while practicing than by watching me type it on a screen, okay? And also a little disclaimer for those of you taking the CSA exam, it's handwritten. You don't get a computer, you don't get a keyboard, 
you get a pen and paper. And you need to handwrite if parentheses num1 uh, space equals equals num2 and you're writing this on your AP exam with a pen. Just wanted to clear that up in case anyone didn't notice. Okay, so moving on from there, you also have the else statement, or what's commonly referred to as the if-else statement, the if-else couple, because they go together. Okay, so if num1 equals equals num2, then that yes part executes, then you can write an else statement. Okay. And the way the else statement works is it works in a conjunction with an if, if statement. You can never have an else, state, else statement by itself. And you can only ever have a single else statement. And we'll cover uh, the permutations of that in just a moment. Okay. So the way this code runs is if num1 equals num2, then the system prints yes. If this boolean evaluates to false, then the computer executes the else code. It executes the code that is between the curly braces of the else operator. Okay, so if we see that in action, we should expect this to print no, which I forgot to put a semicolon behind. Now the system prints out no right here, as you can see. Okay. If we go back to uh, greater than, greater than, then it's going to print out yes. Notice how only one of these is ever executed. Either it's true and if executes, or it's false and else executes. So basically, if this is true, do this. If it's not true or else, do this. Now, beyond from there, we have, aside from the if-else couple, the else-if iteration. So what I'm going to do here is if num1 is greater than num2, I'm going to print out greater, that's freighter, greater. If that statement evaluates to false, then the computer is going to keep going and it's going to encounter this statement, the else if statement. And so what this does is this condition, I'm going to put a condition in here if num1 equals num2 then this set of code will execute system.out.println equals. So basically what this is doing is it says if num1 is greater than num2, we execute this. If that is false, then we continue on here. And if the first statement was false, we then check this condition. If this statement is true, then we execute this. Okay, if this statement, the first statement is true, then we never read this. Okay, that's why it's an else if. If we wanted the computer to read this condition and then read this condition, then this would just be a second if statement. But the purpose of the else if is this statement is only read if the first statement evaluates to false. Okay, and then to complete the chain, I'm going to write another else statement in the same chain. Else, you're going to print out to the user that they are less. Okay, so understand what we're doing here. If num1 is greater than num2, the two are greater. If it's not greater than the two, but it is equal, they're equal. If it's neither greater nor equal, then it's less. So understand the logic behind the code. Okay, and if we print this out, we'll discover that I forgot my semicolon. And if we print it out again, we're going to discover that I misspelled ln. And if we print it out again, we're going to get that they are greater. If we put in a 2, we're going to discover that they are equal. And if we put in a 1, we're going to discover that 1 is less than 2. Okay, let me add another number here so we can expand to the more complex Boolean operators. Okay, we already discussed the exclamation mark, which is used to not something, which is used to uh, convert a false to true or a true to false. But we also have another two operators, the double and percent and the double vertical bar, which should be just above your enter key when you hold shift. Okay. This is the not operator, this is the and operator, and this is the or operator. Okay, 
So let's demonstrate these with an ins if statement. If, and we're going to need to use parentheses for this, if num1 is greater than num2, uh, close our parentheses, and num1 is greater than num3, then num1 is the greatest. And we're going to print out num1 to say num1 is the greatest. So this checks to see if num1 is greater than num2 and is greater than num3, and only if both conditions are satisfied at the same time does this piece of code execute. Okay. Consequently, I can use the OR operator, in which case if only one of the two is true, then this code will execute. Okay? Pretty simple. The AND operator and the OR operator. Now from there, uh, we have something that might be a bit uh, difficult to understand fully, but is very easy to memorize, and that's called De Morgan's Law. Okay? It's kind of like the distributive property for Boolean operators. So let me bring this thing down so we can discuss De Morgan's Law. Okay? So this is my if Boolean statement. Now let's say, let me put the whole statement in parentheses, and let me not the whole statement, okay? What that does is whenever the statement would have previously evaluated to true, now it evaluates to false, and whenever it previously was false, now it's going to be true, okay? So, De Morgan's Law is kind of like a distributive property, and it allows us to create an exactly equivalent boolean that evaluates to the same value for all inputs, okay? So, this Boolean expression right here, let me copy just the parentheses, is exactly equivalent to, I can distribute the not into both my operators, and I invert the center, okay? So, not A or B, is the same thing as not A and not B. Okay, uh, I have a tool that helps us visualize this. So here I'm going to write the first expression that I had on my code, which was some statement, some Boolean statement, num1 greater than num2, I'm going to call that A, and I had it with or my second Boolean statement, which was num1 greater than num3, and I'm going to call that statement B and we knotted this whole statement. Okay, so let's fill out a table of what happens when A evaluates to true, well, I should call this A and this B, A, B. What happens when A evaluates to true and B evaluates to true? That means the parenthetical expression is true and I knot it, so it's false. What about the case where A is true and B is false? The parenthetical expression evaluates to true, because one of the two is true. And if I not it, it evaluates to false. Same thing here. One of the expression evaluates to true, so therefore the whole parenthetical expression is true, and this evaluates to false, because of the not. Now when both are false, the parentheses evaluates to false, and I not it to get a true. Okay. So this is the solutions, the table of possibilities to this expression. Over here on the right, I'm going to write the De Morgan's Law equivalent, which is not A and not B, okay? So in that scenario, what is going to be my final output if both are true, okay? If A is true and I not it, this part is now false. If B is true and I nod it, this part is now false. So the whole thing evaluates to false. If A is true and B is false, then the whole expression evaluates to false. If B is true and A is false, 
that means B, this section is now false and this section is now true and both of them need to be true in order for us to evaluate to true so we're uh, at a false again okay only when B is false does this not make it a true and when A is false does the not make it a true and since our ands here the whole expression only evaluates to true when both are true so therefore the only case where this is true is when both are false so using these uh, tables of possibilities these uh, tables that analyze the output for all inputs we can see that this expression is exactly the same as this expression not a or b is the same as not a and not b and the same is true for the reverse where if i have not a and b that is exactly equal to not a or not b so you distribute the not and you invert the center operator okay that's going to be our unit three guys thanks for tuning in